Hello everyone, my name is Jason Parker and welcome back to this channel about magic! So, in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at artificial intelligence. There's a new app that's been trending all over the internet called ChatGPT. It uses machine learning and artificial intelligence to basically have a conversation with you. You can ask it any question you want and it'll give you a reasonable response. So my first thought was, of course, magic. What kind of information can we glean from this AI? What does it know? Does it know anything about magic? Well, today we're going to find out. I have put together a list of 10 highly provocative questions about magic and we will find out what kind of magic secrets this AI knows. So this is ChatGPT the tool. It's got some examples of what you can do. We're going to jump in right here with our first question. Who is the best magician of all time? ChatGPT is working. It is difficult to say who the greatest magician of all time is as the title is subjective and depends on personal opinion. Some notable magicians throughout history include Harry Houdini, David Copperfield, and Dynamo. And David Blaine? Why is he not on the list? Smash like if you've heard of Harry Houdini, David Copperfield, and Dynamo. For my American viewers at home, those who don't know, Dynamo is a famous magician in the UK. I think probably most Americans know who David Copperfield and David Blaine is. And everyone knows Harry Houdini. Alright, time to get a little more saucy with question number two. Who's the worst magician of all time? This could be offensive. Are you impressed with my typing abilities? Because <laughs> I know I am. It is not for me to say who the worst magician of all time is, as that is a matter of personal opinion. I guess we got this kind of, oh, it's subjective. What well, one person considers to be the worst magician, another may consider to be highly entertaining. Well, that's true. It is important to remember that everyone has different tastes and opinions, and what may not be enjoyable to one person may be very enjoyable to another. Blah, blah, blah. I feel like this chatbot needs more of an opinion needs more of a backbone. It should stand up for what it believes. Question number three. What is magic? Let's just test its knowledge a little bit here, shan't we? Magic is the art of producing illusions as entertainment by the use of sleight of hand. Deception and other techniques. It can also refer to the use of supernatural powers or abilities to achieve seemingly impossible feats. Magic has been a part of human culture for thousands of years and is often associated with stage performers and mystics. That does seem to be a pretty accurate definition. How about magic tricks? Question number four. Let's see if it knows the difference. Magic tricks are specific techniques or methods used by magicians to create illusions as part of the performance. These tricks often involve the use of sleight of hand, deception, and other techniques to create the illusion of supernatural powers or abilities. Some examples of common magic tricks include card tricks, disappearing acts, and sawing a person in half. A person. But let's be honest, it's usually a woman. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just in the history of magic, that's how it typically goes down. Some kind of misogyny, hating women and wanting to cut them in half. Oh hey there, Jason from the future here. I'm currently editing this video and I thought since I was talking about the illusion of a magician sawing a woman in half and we're talking about AI, wouldn't it be funny if I could use one of the AI image generation tools out there to show some kind of photo to depict what I was talking about at that moment. And this is what I got. Thanks, Dolly2. Really cool use of technology and not at all creepy. Actually, the system was trying to prevent me from typing a woman's sod in half. It considered it too sensitive material. So I was trying to be creative and typing like woman separated in half in a box. Which next gave me this. I mean, what the heck? And what's the deal with uh, one eye normal and one eye semi cyborg undead zombie? Is that just par for the course for AI? <laughs> So I thought, okay, I'll sign up for a different app. I'll use this one, Mid Journey, also very popular. And this is the result I got. It 
just seems like I wasn't destined to get a good magician saw in a woman in half image generated from AI. But not being one to give up, I tried one more website called Crayon, and this was my result. Yeah. The stuff of nightmares. Mmm, the smell of magic. I don't know how the heck it got that from a woman separated into two halves magic trick. What's this? Print on a t-shirt? Sign me up. Comment below if you would like this printed on a t-shirt. We just need a clever caption, something like, No, not with your nose. Smash the subscribe and the like button simultaneously, join my Patreon, and we'll make this t-shirt a reality. JK, JK. All right, well, this has been a fun little tangent. Back to the main video. So I gotta say, it's a pretty good definition. It's funny that it says common magic tricks include card tricks as like listed as the very first thing because that really is the paintbrush of magicians. It's like, you can tell a thousand different stories with the deck of playing cards. And you can also do magic tricks with them too. Speaking of gender bias in magic, I'm gonna insert a bonus question here. I'm gonna say, yeah, let's see if we can give this chat program to give an inappropriate response. Can women be magicians too? <laughs> yes, women can definitely be magicians as well. In fact, there have been many notable female magicians throughout history. Some examples include uh, Delayed Hermann, who was known as the Queen of Magic, and the great Lafayette, who was one of the highest paid magicians of the early 20th century. We <laughs> hello there. Jason from the future, once again. I decided to Google the great Lafayette after filming this video and discovered, in the immortal words of Austin Powers, that's a man, baby. Okay, so my impression needs a little bit of work, but as you can see from the Wikipedia article, the great Lafayette is clearly a dude who loved dogs and also died burning in a theater fire. Life, what you gonna do? Anyway, that goes to show you can't necessarily trust everything coming out of ChatGPT's mouth not to be a blatant lie. And back to your regularly scheduled video. Today, there are many successful female magicians who continue to entertain and amaze audiences with their incredible performances. Hmm. Well, I've never heard of these two magicians. I know there definitely are, like currently there's lots of female magicians, but there have always been way more male magicians for whatever reason. I was just curious if it would uh, say something. Let's just dig a little further. Why are there more male magicians than female magicians? Does it understand my question? It's difficult to say why there may be, allegedly, more male magicians than female magicians. There could be a variety of factors at play, including societal norms and expectations, opportunities available to men and women, and individual choices and interests. In the past, the field of magic may have been predominantly male-dominated due to societal norms and expectations, but this is changing as more and more women are becoming interested in magic and pursuing careers as magicians. I would agree. That's cool. This uh, chat program really seems to understand the context of what I'm talking to it about. Even if the answers are a little vague and nebulous and not as entertaining as you might hope, for this video that I was really hoping would do well. Smash like. But one thing I cannot fault it for is it definitely understands what I am asking. Very interesting. And that brings us to question number five. Another gender biased question, my apologies. <laughs> I guess I can make it a person, but you know, that's the way I always see this magic trick done and I wanna make sure it gets the question right. How does a magician Make a, make a woman float. Let's see if it's gonna reveal the secrets of magicians. I was really curious if this chatbot will tell us something. There are several ways that a magician can make a woman appear to float. I thought for, for the beginning it was gonna say like, what do you mean woman? It could be a man or a woman. <laughs> there are several ways that a magician can make a woman appear to float. One common method is called the levitation illusion, which involves the use of hidden supports or wires to make the woman appear to be floating in midair. Exposure much? Ah! Another method is called the floating table illusion in which the woman appears to be floating on top of a table. In both cases, the magician uses clever misdirection and sleight of hand to create the illusion of a woman floating. That's actually not too bad. All it said was hidden supports or wires. All right, I'm gonna ask a follow-up question. Can you show me a diagram of how this works? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm not able to browse the internet. I do not have access to diagrams or visual aids. Blah, blah, blah. But what about card magic? I hear you asking me, Jason. 
Card magic is the largest area in magic. Okay, okay. I'll ask about card magic. How does a magician find your card? This should be interesting. When a magician finds your chosen card in a deck, it is usually done through a combination of sleight of hand and clever deception. Boring. Magicians are trained to manipulate cards in such a way that makes it appear as though they are performing supernatural feats. In reality, they are using a variety of techniques to control the order of cards and make it appear as though they are able to locate a chosen card with ease. This can involve shuffling the deck in specific ways using distractions and practicing extensively to perfect the trick. I wonder if it was programmed not to reveal these secrets or if it just kind of doesn't know and has this kind of blanket answers. Okay, 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 one last card trick question. How about the torn card effect? How does a magician restore a torn card? See, this is very specific, so let's see. When a magician restores a torn card, it is typically done through a combination of sleight of hand and misdirection. The magician will first tear the card in half or into multiple pieces, making sure to keep one of the pieces hidden from view. They will then use their hand movements and distractions to divert the audience's attention away from the torn card. Once the audience is focused on something else, the magician will secretly replace the torn piece with the hidden piece, making it appear as though the card has been restored. This trick requires a great deal of skill and practice to execute smoothly. I would agree. I'm going to go ahead and give that a thumbs up because I see there's an option to rate things here. I have just improved AI over the world with my feedback. You're welcome. Actually, this one, I would say, is really exposing the secret. <laughs> this is like, hit the nail on the head. At least, I mean, there, there's a thousand variations of the torn card, right? Different creators have different methods. The one that I like to perform does kind of do what it's describing. So, huh. Exposure. Magician secrets revealed. Should that be the title of this video? I gotta get the clicks. What can I say? For our sixth question, I wanted to know if this chatbot would be able to find out specific information about individuals. So let's try David Blaine, for example. How old is David Blaine? I'm sorry, but I'm not able to provide current information or browse the internet. My training data only goes up until 2021. Well, I should still know how old he is. What if I do someone more famous, perhaps? How old is David Copperfield? Copperfield is a famous magician and illusionist born in, okay, 1956. That means as of today, he would be 66 years old. And then it's reminding me that it doesn't have any data past 2021 in case he died. Let's try to get a little more specific. What color are David Copperfield's eyes? I'm sorry, but I didn't have information about the physical appearance of David Copperfield or any other individuals. Can't talk about physical appearances or current events. <laughs> See, we are poking around here and finding the limitations of this thing. Speaking of which, bonus question. Do you know what you are? <laughs> Let's get philosophical here. As a language model trained by OpenAI, my primary function is to generate written responses to questions. I am not a physical being, but a program that has been designed to process an analyst language. I do not have personal experiences or knowledge beyond my training data. So that's a yes. Yes, that's correct. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Ah, da, 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 da. This thing needs to be programmed to give shorter answers. Can you give me a shorter answer, please? Sure, I can prefer a shorter answer. As long as I'm. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. That was only slightly shorter, but still pretty long. I gotta say, this is pretty fun. I can just think of like a thousand different questions, but let's stay on the script. Question number seven What percentage? of humans are magicians in the world. It's difficult to say as there's no definitive data on the number of magicians in the world. Magic is not a profession that is tracked or regulated. <laughs> and there's no standard definition of what constitutes a magician. Additionally, the number of people who practice magic as a hobby or for personal enjoyment is likely much larger than the number of professional magicians. As a result, it is not possible to accurately estimate what percentage of humans are magicians. Wow, I gotta say I'm impressed. That was a very thorough and accurate answer. Although it would have been nice if they just gave me a percentage because I've often wondered, is it like less than 1%? It's gotta be, because I imagine if you met 100 people, one of them wouldn't always be a magician. Number eight, we're almost there. What are magician's greatest secrets? Let's get those secrets exposed, shan't we? Thinking, processing, hmm, having a hard time with this one. Well, that or my internet cut out. 
Oh. One of the greatest secrets of magicians is that many of the illusions and tricks they perform are not actually supernatural or impossible. <laughs> I think most people know that magicians are just performing entertainment. Instead, they use a combination of blah, 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 blah. Magicians are trained to manipulate blah, 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 blah. Another secret of magicians is that they often practice extensively to perfect their tricks and routines. That's true. Magicians spend hours or even years practicing in order to be able to perform their tricks smoothly and flawlessly. Yeah, I would say that the average spectator definitely underestimates how much time the average magician has invested into the, the effects that they are performing. You can sink so many hours into this one special move, and when you're performing the magic trick, you have to do that one part completely invisibly. So they, they just think you're picking up the cards and moving them over there, but you did something that no one is even aware of that is amazing. You know, and in the very end, like, their card, you find it or it appears over here. But the actual sleight of hand that you spent the time learning if you do it correctly, no one ever sees it or appreciates it. <laughs> but I do love magic. It has a, a special, a certain something, you know? Question number nine. Have any magicians died from performing magic? Yes, unfortunately, there have been instances in which magicians have died while performing magic. It can be dangerous, accidents happen even when all safety precautions are taken. In some cases, dangerous stunts are illusions. For example, Harry Houdini, who was one of the most famous magicians of all time, died after sustaining a ruptured appendix while performing one of his signature escapes. Actually, I think it was because this guy punched him in the stomach before he was ready for it. I think that's how he got a ruptured appendix, and it was not. So that's slightly incorrect. It's important for magicians to carefully plan and execute their tricks in order to minimize the risk of injury or death. Some of these answers just sound so safe and like telling you what they need to tell you to not be legally liable if you do something stupid. There should be like a checkbox you can check on here that's just like explicit mode and it just gives you like the raw answer without any warnings. <laughs> I mean, it's probably good for uh, younger people there using this. And the last question, question 10. I wanted to ask something along the lines of do magicians lie or is lying bad? But I wanna ask it in the right order so he can have the context here. Let's start with is lying bad? Very simple. It's a moral question, but usually people agree that it's kind of bad. Let's see if this thing has an opinion. Or is it gonna say like, sometimes lying is, you know, usually it's bad, but sometimes it can be good to spare people's feelings. Lying is generally considered to be bad because it can involves making false statements with the intention of deceiving others. Lying can harm or damage, create conflicts. Legal consequences, however, there may be certain circumstances in which lying is considered acceptable or necessary. For example, some people may lie to protect someone else from harm or to avoid causing unnecessary hurt or discomfort. No, your butt does not look too big. In general, however, lying is generally considered to be bad because it goes against the principles of honesty and integrity. And now with my follow-up question, I've planted the seed that we've, I'm like a lawyer, I've established that lying is generally bad, okay? Now I'm gonna ask, do magicians lie? That's kind of a complicated question. Let's see if it, if you can understand what I'm trying to imply here. I'm guessing it saw that I asked about lying earlier and I'm asking another question about lying. So, while all magicians are different, some may use lying as part of their performance. Wow, this thing really understands what I'm trying to ask. In the context of magic, lying refers to making false statements or claims with the intention of deceiving the audience. A magician may claim to have supernatural powers or make statements about their tricks that are not true in order to create the illusion of the impossible. That's especially true because sometimes I'll be, you know, doing stuff with cards and I'm like, and I want you to, uh, I don't really want to expose that. Okay, I might talk about how I have a coin in my hand, right? And I'm shaking it and I can feel it getting hotter and now it's gone, you know? But I lied because I had actually already using sleight of hand made it not in this hand to begin with. So magicians often use this as kind of a, a concept of a time delay. The move has already happened earlier, but the, the uh, effect, the presentation is that it disappears at that moment when you open your hand. That's a little magic secret for you there, a little tidbit. While this type of lying is done for entertainment purposes and is not intended to harm anyone, it is still considered to be dishonest. However, not all magicians engage in this type of deception and some may choose to perform magic without using any false statements or claims. Hmm, what do you think? Is it okay for a magician to lie while he is performing? I think it's okay. 
as long as you don't get into this area of claiming you can predict someone's future or tarot reading or speaking to the dead where you're trying to manipulate people for money, you know, even not for money. It's not really okay to pretend you can actually speak with their dead family members. But anyway, I think that's uh, very interesting. Some, some really cool answers there. I'm immediately thinking of other questions, but I, I don't want this video to go on forever, so we're gonna stop it there. Leave a comment below what you thought about this chat GPT artificial intelligence. Let me know, do you practice magic? Are you a magician? Even if you aren't, is there one magic trick you know how to do? I feel like you owe it to yourself to be able to do one magic trick with playing cards. And if you want to learn some great ones, you can check out my Patreon. I'm uploading magic trick tutorials there as well as life updates where I talk kind of behind the scenes what's going on with me. You can interact with me more directly on there easily. And it's a way to help support this channel because I certainly don't survive off YouTube revenue yet. If you can think of any other questions that you think I should ask and if you really like this video and want to see a part two, uh, you could type some questions that you want me to ask in the comments. And if we, I suppose if we get enough of those, if this video gets enough views and enough smashes likes, then I'll consider doing another video. Otherwise, this is it. And so I hope that you're having a fantastic week. I hope that you take a breath and appreciate time with family during these holiday seasons. It just started snowing here, like they had this big snowstorm that rolled in. I'm over here in Poland, and in a day and a half, my flight leaves Warsaw, and I'll fly back to Texas to visit my family. So I'm really hoping that the airports or the flights don't get delayed or canceled because of this. But yeah, I hope that you're enjoying this time of year. Keep it magical, and I'll see you on next time. Yep.